Occupying a vast expanse of desert between Russia and China, the Mongolian nation dates back to the time of Genghis Khan. But the sacred stones and remote temples are testimony to another history too, that of Mongolian Buddhism. Only a decade ago, this seemingly timeless ceremony would have been illegal. Under successive communist governments, Buddhism was forbidden for almost 70 years. But now the Bok Lama was coming home. For thousands of Mongolians, this was the return of their king. Before Mongolia followed Russia in accepting communism in 1921, the eighth Bok Lama ruled what was essentially a theocratic Buddhist state. But this man, his successor, was born in Tibet and was only discovered as his reincarnation in 1991. Since then, he has been living with the Dalai Lama in India. And after several failed attempts, the Bok Lama finally succeeded in entering Mongolia on a tourist visa. He has recently been traveling around the country, visiting the rebuilt monasteries and talking about the Buddhist way. The message is simple. It's about restoring religion to a central place in Mongolian life. You mustn't think that only the nine of Lama will develop religion and spread it around Mongolia. All of us, the followers of the teaching, the clergy, the monks, must stick to the doctrine of the in the same manner. And his words are being taken to heart by at least some of the population. Wherever he's been, crowds have gathered to catch a glimpse of him, or if lucky, to receive a blessing. Clearly, the opiate of the people is still capable of a powerful effect. Although it's eight years now since the end of communism in Mongolia, the mausoleum for the Stalinist leaders and the statue of Lenin point to the recent past. And if the dream is dead, then it's back to the future. The monastery of Mantushir was one of the largest and most powerful in pre-communist Mongolia. It was torn down in the 1930s as the new regime reduced nearly 90% of the country's monasteries to ruin. The eighth Bok Lama was held in isolation until his death, but now he's reincarnated. And from the rather unlikely base of a late 20th century hotel room, the Lama has an opportunity that his colleague, the Dalai Lama, can only dream of, to reverse the flow of the sands of time. Most Mongolians have a lot of faith in the Lamas, even if they don't possess a great knowledge of Buddhism. And I've met many good Lamas here. So I think it's possible to rebuild Buddhism here. One anomaly is Hamba Lama Darisuren. Formerly a police captain, he's finally found his true vocation. Of course, all of us were communist party members, including myself. Mm -hmm. Many others of my generation. We followed the current of the time. We had no other choice. The generation before us were the first communist party members. Many were monks and became party members. We had no other choice. We had to follow it. But perhaps there are choices to be made and the task of building the new from the ruins of the old has fallen to some interesting characters. This brand new monastery in Ulaanbaatar has been built with donations. It's the dream of an 83-year-old Indian Lama called Kushok Bakula. He's the Indian ambassador to Mongolia. In the 10 years of his posting to the Mongolian capital, he's witnessed the country's transition from hardline communism to liberal democracy. Lama Kushok Bakula believes that Mongolia and Buddhism are inseparable. Before communism, a large proportion of the population were Lamas. And 70 years of repression isn't long enough to purge their traditional religion from people's lives. There's still a great deal of reverence for the scriptures of one of the world's great faiths. 
The ambassador's convinced that the Bok Lama is authentic, but as a diplomat, he's naturally reluctant to comment on what this may mean for the political future of Mongolia. Mongolia has been a Buddhist nation for centuries. And so all I can say is that Buddhism and Mongolian culture have become one and the same. Mongolia has assimilated so much into Buddhism that the two can't be separated. So I think the people in general look towards Buddhism, not only for spirituality, but also because it's part of their culture and identity. Also, Mongolians have contributed very much to Buddhism. According to Buddhist traditions, there are sets of rules about reincarnation. But urban Mongolia is no longer the traditional society it once was. Social realist apartment blocks now ring the capital. But even the 60% of the population who still live in the traditional yurts would prefer more modern amenities. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the flow of aid from that quarter dried up, so development has slowed. Amarbat and his family moved to the capital a few years ago. They rent this yurt for about 30 US dollars a month. But inflation is high, and life in the free market is tough. The dream of a better life is so far proving elusive for Amarbat. I have lived my whole life in a girl. I was even born in one. But in the future, of course, I would like to live in a new apartment building. With all the comforts, heat and running water. A recent official survey of living standards in Mongolia shows that more than one third of the country is living in poverty. It's a condition that's getting worse in urban areas where the gap between rich and poor has widened. Whether looking towards the golden panacea of the life hereafter is the answer, no one knows. But perhaps a return to their traditional values, their rural lifestyle, can provide the spiritual nourishment that the Mongols had begun to miss. <laughs>